Hey, this is video 10 in a little mini series that I'm calling Basic Limit Theorems. We're going to look at Slutsky's Theorem in this video, and it, it states that if Xn converges in distribution to X and Yn converges in probability to a constant not equal to zero, then the following uh, hold that addition converges in distribution to this, you know, the product converges in distribution. The ratio converges, and um, and here we're assuming that the probability that y n is equal to uh, not equal to zero is one. Um, in the interest of time, we're going to only prove the third one here. We're going to assume it's continuous and that the c is positive. Uh, for negative, it's a similar, very similar proof. Uh, for uh, the discrete case, it's a little bit different, but but similar. So that this is what we're going to assume. So we must show that this distribution, so the uh, distribution of x n over y n converges in distribution of x over c. So the distribution of that is this and we're going to call it f of xn over yn of z converges to to f of uh, x over c and then uh, this distribution of course is uh, the probability that x over c is less than or equal to z and then it, we can multiply the c up and you know and if c ends up being positive it's this and if it's negative it's one minus it in the continuous case uh, in the discrete case, then you have to, it's one minus, but then this is approaches the left limit of that anyway. So we're going to try to prove this first case. So uh, first, let's, let's show that this assumption holds. Okay, so we need to show that the probability that yn is uh, not equal to zero is one. So now we note that in, in the assumption that yn converges in probability to c implies, you know, that, um, that the probability of yn minus c less than epsilon goes to 1, okay? Which, you know, the property of absolute value says that yn, you know, actually yn minus c is less than epsilon but greater than minus epsilon. And then we add c everywhere, we end up with this. And again, it converges in probability to 1. Now the tricky part here is, now this difference, if we let epsilon be a little bit smaller than c, this is a positive number, so it's greater than 0. And that's what we do. So let's let epsilon be less than c. Then the probability that yn is greater than 0 goes to 1. That's this case. You know, it's between these. So it's definitely greater than, than zero, assuming this condition. And then this condition that it goes to one is the equivalent to the probability that yn is not equal to zero. That converges in one, assuming uh, c is positive. Um, so we can divide by uh, cn. Oh, so this ratio here says we can divide by yn except perhaps on a null set. So outside this null set, we have the, now we start developing uh, formulas and relationships. So the, this is uh, the distribution function of xn over yn. And if we uh, intersect this with the entire sample space, it doesn't change it. And so that's what we do here. So we intersect it with this and that, which is the entire sample space, and then we distribute this through, um, you know, the that intersection, and plus is like union, by the way. So then this uh, probability, so, oh, these are disjoint sets, so the probability is the sum. And then um, here, coming down, if we take away this, this condition, this set of the intersection, it gets a little bit bigger. And that's what we do here. Now, this becomes an interesting probability. Um, and so we want to, to delve a little deeper into this. And now we know that the probability that yn less than 0 goes to 0. 
that's this piece. So we can assume that Yn is positive. And, and that's a safe assumption because Yn converges in probability to the C and we're assuming C is positive. So at some point that becomes positive. So now let's look at some more sets. So um, this set that Xn over Yn less than Z, again, this we're going to union it with the entire sample space which is these two pieces so we have this intersect this union this and then we distribute this piece across and we get this so these two sets are the same now um, for this piece here if we take away this subset of the intersection it gets a little bit bigger and so that's what we do from here to here this is the same 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 but for this intersection, we get rid of that, which then makes it a little bit bigger. So this is a subset of that. Now, the next piece, we're going to look at this, where it's the absolute value. And um, this, we, you know, we note that this means that Yn is between these two. Okay? So therefore, um, we're going to look at this piece here, down here. Okay? So if z we're assuming z is zero, uh, greater than zero, which is, is this z. So now y is between these two. Okay, we're assuming z is positive. So look at look at this and this condition. So this condition says that y is between here. So let's multiply z times each of those and and put it here. And so if we put z times c plus epsilon here the set gets a little bigger and then if we take away this intersection piece it even gets bigger so that's what that's how we know that this is a subset of this now if if z is negative or you know less than zero and we look at this piece again now this again is this assumption but so if we put in you know we multiply negative times each of those it reverses those signs so it says z times c minus epsilon is greater than z times yn so if we put that in here and then do the intersection it gets just a little bit bigger but then if we take away this piece it even gets bigger and then that's what this piece is saying so this is definitely a subset of that and then we know for so for all z you know this set is is a subset of this you know c, you know with c plus or minus epsilon it's a subset and um and so here another little tricky piece is if we on this half here if we union the y n minus c greater than or equal to epsilon on this piece that becomes the entire sample space so if, then when we intersect it we just get this back but over here we get the union of that of the big set so that to go from here to here we do that we union the complement of this and it only leaves this piece here and then of course we divide it by yn over here and then this set is you know this complement union here and so this is a subset of that now when we take probabilities, it says the probability of this is less than or equal to the probability of this. But since that's the union, that is less than the or equal to the probability of this plus the probability of that. And that's how we get to this piece here. Um, so now, um, so we're here. So note as n goes to infinity... Um, this piece here goes to zero. So um, then uh, this piece over here, we know that uh, the, the that xn converges in distribution to x. So this goes in you know converges in distribution to this. This is a this is a CDF that converges by the assumption xn converges to x. So we know that. So then we obtain that this piece here 
is less than or equal to this piece, okay? And, the, and this converges, this converges in distribution to X, okay? So now the limb soup of this probability, this set, this sequence is less than or equal to this. Okay, so now a couple notes here. Um, this is bounded. We just showed it was bounded by this. So the limb soup exists. So, okay, that's an important part here. And then um, and now we uh, now our goal. Well, let me let me let me go one step further, and then come back to that. So here, if we then if we let epsilon go to zero, this converges to you know the zero goes away, and then we're just f of x z uh, c z. So now then we know that the limb soup of this is less than or equal to this. So that because it's bounded. We know this limb soup exists. So now we want to establish some sort of limp in, limit infimum of this set and show that the limb soup and the limb imp equal each other. That means the limit exists and is equal to the, the same limit that those two equal. Um, so, Let's now let's so we have to remember this. We'll come back to it. Matter of fact, we called it asterisk. Um, so next, we're going to figure out some sort of relationship for the limb imp, the limit infimum. So if we have this set here, and then we intersect it with the entire sample space, which is this piece here, and then you distribute that through, you get this. So these two sets are equal, and then over here we. Uh, keep everything but the same, but we get rid of this half of the intersect, so it got a little bit bigger. And then that's what this piece is. So those, that's how we get from here to here. And then, um, and then we do something similar. We look at this piece here. So it is, uh, you know, if we let epsilon be less than c, and we look at this, that says that that y n, you know, since c is less than epsilon is less than c this is positive so this relationship holds okay so now and and this is this is one of the assumptions that we have to establish that y is not zero with probability uh one so then and then similar if we let z equal to positive and we look, okay so here in this set um if if we multiply z times each component here, um, z y n is going to be bigger than z c minus e, this piece here. So then if we put z y n here, it just got a little bit bigger. And then if we get rid of this intersection, it even got bigger. And that's this here, except we divide to the, the y n over here. Now let's look at uh, z less than zero and we look at this piece here um, and so if we times z times everything here the these reverse and then uh, z y n is bigger than z c plus epsilon so if we put that in here z y n it gets a little bit bigger and then we get rid of this piece it even gets bigger and that's what this is except for we divide it by y n and then so what that is saying that th the intersection of these two is a subset of this you know c plus or minus epsilon okay so hence then we can look at those probabilities um oh so then on this set we're going to union um, the complement to both sides. So this is, becomes the um, the uh, sample space that intersect with this, and you just get that back. Okay, and then that was the complement that we said that we union to both sides. So this is true, which then says the probability of this is less than the probability of this, which is less than the probability of this plus the probability of that. That's this piece here. But since n goes to infinity, and um, 
we know by the assumption that yn converges in probability of c, so that the fact that that's greater than epsilon, that goes to zero. So this goes away. And um, we know that xn converges in distribution to x. So this converges in distribution to f of x. And then um, now that says that this probability here is bounded below by this, by this piece. So since it's a bounded sequence, a bounded, you know, yeah, sequence, then we know the limit in femum exists, okay? Um, and the limit in femum is greater than or equal to this piece here, in, you know, as n gets really, really big. So um, if we let epsilon go to zero, then this, this piece here, just the epsilon goes away and we're just f of x, z, uh, evaluate at ZC, okay? So then the limit in femum is greater than or equal to this, okay? And we, we call this double star. So if we look at star and double star, then th this piece is less than or equal to the infimum, which is less than or equal to the limit supremum, which is less than or equal to, it's actually the same thing. So all those have to be equal. That says that the limit of this sequence exists because the limit in femum and the limit supremum are the same thing. So this limit does exist. So we've established existence. And we know that it equals this piece here. Okay, and that is the probability that, that X is less than or CZ. But if we divide C to both sides, then this probability is actually F of XC of Z and so then we have just shown that the probability of this limit, or this, uh, you know, which is this distribution function, converges to the distribution function of x over c. Okay. Well, that's all I have for this video. I know it's running a little long, but it's a, it's a, Slutsky's theorem is such an important uh, theorem in probability that I had to prove at least one of them. Um, so if you, if you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. The next proof, we're going to show that the sample variance converges to the population variance, almost surely, and in probability. Thanks. Bye.